22 to 23 people died on waiting for an organ transplant that never came for them. So that roughly estimates to about one person every hour. Um, so by the time this class started, by the time it ends, another person will have died waiting for a transplant. Um, currently, there are 77,589 people on the organ transplant waiting list, and that list adds about 3,000 every month. Um, so some of you may know somebody who is maybe waiting for an organ, or maybe you will know somebody in your future who might need an organ to live. Um, by becoming an organ donor, you can save up to eight different lives and you can enhance the lives of so many others. Um, you help keep families together. Um, after researching and learning about the facts of organ donation, I've decided to become an organ donor. Um, there's two ways you can become an organ donor. When you get your license, they ask you on your, when you fill out your paperwork if you want to be an organ donor. You say yes when your license comes in the mail. You get a little red uh, sticker on your license that says organ donor on it. Or if you already have your license, then you can register under the state's registry on this. Um, well, actually, there's many websites, but this is one of the websites. It's called register.donatelifecalifornia.org. So you register under your state. And then when it comes time to renew your license, then that's when you get the little red sticker on your license. Um, so like I said, you can save eight different lives just by donating your organs um, and also your tissues. Today, I'm going to share with you the benefits of organ donation in hopes of inspiring you into giving someone the greatest gift after you die, which is the gift of life. Um, so first, I'm going to explain to you guys what organ donation is in case maybe many of you don't know. Um, okay. So organ donation is the process of giving an organ for the purpose of transplantation into another person. So when you pass away, you are giving permission for your organs to be given to someone else who may not be able to live without them. So, um, so in order for your organs to be used for another person, blood and oxygen must flow through them until time of recovery to ensure viability. So uh, I know it's like weird or maybe scary to talk about death, but basically, you are a donor, you have to die in a way where your organs are not destroyed. You have to die from a neurological injury or massive brain trauma, such as something like an aneurysm or a stroke, or unfortunately, many times, um, car accidents. Um, once a person has been declared brain dead, then your organs will be considered for donation. Um, so, organs that can be used for life-saving transplants are your heart, your liver, your pancreas, kidneys, lungs, and your small bowel movement. And um, organs are actually not the only thing that can be used to save other people's lives. Also, your tissues, which include your cornea, heart valves, bones, and skin. So, with your cornea, you can give someone the, the ability to see for blind people. And for you can um, for bones, there they do um, like bone marrow transplants. Um, just last year, there was um, estimated one million people received tissue transplants that helped them recover from trauma such as bone damage, spinal injuries, hearing impairment, and vision loss. Okay. So now that I've explained to you what organ donation is, I'm going to tell you about some of the myths that maybe heard about organ donations. So some of the myths about organ donation is that people think if you become an organ donor, doctors will not do everything they can to save you if you're in critical condition because they want your organs to save other people. That is not true. The doctor's number one priority is always to save your life before anyone else's. And in fact, some doctors, they may not even know that you are an organ donor until after you have died, but they have no, um, that information does not, um, 
that if information about if you're an organ donor does not make them decide to keep you alive or not, they, their number one job is to keep you alive. Only after all efforts to save your life have failed will the organ donation be contacted about your death and then your, donation, your body will be considered for organ donation. Another myth is some people say that organ donation is against their religion, which um, most organized religions such as Catholicism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and Protestant faiths are all in support of organ donation. They see it as a kind of last general, I mean, last um, generous offering. Um, and it's, of course, it's a very individual choice to do that. Um, another popular myth is open casket funerals are not options for people who have donated their organs. I don't know why people think that maybe when they become an organ donor that their bodies are just like cut open and I don't know, like their organs are taken and nobody cares about the rest of their body. That's not true. Um, the, they have surgeries just as if somebody who was alive has surgeries. They are cut open, their organs are taken out and they're sewed back up just like a regular person. And we are allowed to have open casket funerals are fully clothed in your casket, so nobody will be able to tell if you have donated organs or not. Um, and yeah, I also read that um, family members tend to, um, they say that knowing that their loved one has helped save lives has helped them cope with the loss of their loved one. Um, so in conclusion, I just wanted to remind you that with your one body, you can save eight other bodies and enhance so many other people's lives. And the way I see it is when you die, you don't really have a need for your organs anymore. So why would you deprive someone else who does need them? Um, I hope that this kind of opened your mind to the idea of donating your organs. And maybe next time in a few years when you have to renew your license, you will remember this presentation when they ask you